My friends of the District of Columbia and of the whole country, this is a wonderful custom. And I'm glad that it is followed in so many communities, so many states throughout our union. Here we are on the ellipse, as it's called, below the White House, and in the open space, this wonderful tree which will be seen by hundreds of thousands of people during the coming week. I was talking this morning with Mrs. Roosevelt, and we had an idea. Here we are out in a, in a public park. We wondered whether we couldn't make this ceremony a little bit more homey. There are hundreds and hundreds of people here today. And we thought that possibly, if the idea appeals to Mr. Young and the other commissioners of the district, that next year, if we're all here, we might have the tree placed on the south end of the White House grounds in that big open space where you could see it from all sides and that of all you good people in the district who come to this ceremony should come into the White House grounds next year and let me give my little Christmas message from the porch of the White House. At this Christmas tide of 1940, it is well for all of humanity to remind itself that while this is in its name a Christian celebration, it is participated in reverently and happily by hundreds of millions of people throughout the world people who are members of other religions, people who belong actively, perhaps, to no church at all. It is Christmas. And the reason is not far to seek for that general participation. It is because the spirit of unselfish service, personified by the life and the teachings of Christ, makes appeal to the inner conscience and the hope of every man and every woman in every part of the earth. It transcends in the ultimate all lines of race, of habitat, of nation. It lives in the midst of war, of slavery, of conquest. It survives prohibitions and decrees and force. Yes, it is an unquenchable, unquenchable spirit of promise to humanity. Sometimes we who have lived through the strifes and the hates of a quarter of a century, sometimes we wonder if the old world of ours has abandoned the ideals of the brotherhood of man. Sometimes we ask if contention and anger in our own midst in America are a portent of disunion and disaster. And sometimes we fear that the selfishness of the individual is more and more controlling in our lives. When we are in those moods, it is hard for us to keep from putting our tongues in our cheeks when we say Merry Christmas. For then we think in thoughts of futility and not of hope. Yes, a few people are cynics all of the time. And some people are cynics a part of the time. But most people keep their faith most of the time. That is why we must keep on striving for a better and a more happy world. It is unintelligent to be defeatist. Crisis may beget crisis, 
But the progress underneath does not wholly halt. It does go forward. In a century, in the past century, we have gained much, aside from great areas which have been stricken by actual warfare in the present moment, the lives of human beings are safer today than they were in the olden days. Great and spreading plagues take smaller toll. Starvation of millions is less. The forces of nature itself are better controlled. There is in the civilization that we recognize a greater security for the young, for the worker, for the aged. Charity, in the narrower sense of the word, helps the needy more usefully. Compared with those days a century ago when Charles Dickens wrote the Christmas Carol, we see a definite betterment. We do not claim attainment, but we recognize that there is much, oh, so much to do. Most of all, we ask a chance to do it. Yes, a peaceful chance to do it. We want to do it the voluntary way. And most human beings in all the world, all over the world, want to do it the voluntary way. We do not want to have the way imposed on the world, (coughs) imposed on the world by the conquest of the world by the sword. For that, that would not follow in the footsteps of Christ. That would not make for happier Christmases in the future of any nation. Mankind is all one, and what happens in distant lands tomorrow will leave its mark on the happiness of our Christmases to come. Let us make this Christmas a merry one for the little children in our midst, but for us of maturer years it cannot be merry. For most of us, it can be a happy Christmas. A happy Christmas for us if we, by happiness, mean that we have done with doubts, that we have set our hearts against fear, that we still believe in the golden rule for all mankind, that we intend to live more purely in the spirit of Christ, and that by our works, as well as our words, we will strive forward in faith and in hope and in love. In that spirit, I wish a happy Christmas to all, and I wish for all happier Christmases yet to come.